You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but a mind, a journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Next stop, the Saw Guy Podcast. Welcome to the Saw Guy Podcast. As always, I'm the Saw Guy. This is episode 17 on the Twilight Zone, submitted for your approval. That's right. (laughs) Um, I know a lot of people, they forget about Twilight Zone. I wanted to bring this up as a topic on an episode for Twilight Zone because the last people to actually watch it and enjoy it was my generation. And you hear all these new generations, you know, they kind of play winks on it, you know, but they they really don't know what the Twilight Zone is. (laughs) It's funny because uh, I had a conversation with somebody over social media and the only thing that people would tell me, like this newer generation, they would tell me, oh, Twilight Zone, isn't that that ride at Disneyland? And I'm just like, are you serious? You've you never seen the TV show? <laughs> and after that, I was like, okay, hands down, I have to do an episode on the Twilight Zone. So what is the Twilight Zone? Hopefully, most of you horror fans have heard it, at least the general horror fans. But you crazy motherfuckers like me... <laughs> Uh, we lived it. We loved it, you know? Um, a lot of people forget, but anyways, I'll, I'll break it down to you on, on what the Twilight Zone is. It's a TV show written by this guy. His name was Rod Sterling. Who is Rod Sterling? He's a guy who's always smoking, or he's like introduces you to every episode of the Twilight Zone. You hear his voiceover, and he's the guy who really started it. And a little background information on him before I get started on this episode. Basically, he's just a normal, average guy who <laughs> he did a lot he really did he he served his time in world war ii and during his time that he was in world war ii he was you know kind of doing a lot of writings that he had you know predict well not predicted but i know know it was one of those things that just to pass the time you know he was a military guy so he would write horror movie stories well horror stories not horror movies but some of them he had some intentions to do it like writing it as a TV show, some as a movies, but when he got out of the military, then he sent it out to CBS, and then the rest was history, you know, and (laughs) a lot of people are, like, sketchy on Rod Sterling because of the fact of everyone thinks, oh, he didn't do too much, I'm like, he is the old school whore, he really was, you know, because it was around a different time, because the Twilight Zone, when it came out, was 1959 to the 60s. I think I wrote it down in my notes, 1964. And with the Twilight Zone, it was a lot of his writings was in through it. I mean, he didn't write every episode, but he had his hands on everything. Because it was his show. It really was. And it really took off because it was the first of its kind. It was a first ever horror-themed TV show. And... <laughs> I know some of you people are like thinking, you know, you sci-fi people that really like sci-fi stuff. People are going to argue and say, oh, it was more sci-fi, not horror base. Now, I'm going to call you bullshit on that because what Rod Sterling meant in a lot of his interviews, I did a lot of research. He mostly did it on a lot of his stuff that he grew up with. A lot of facts, a lot of beliefs, and he played off a lot of real horror epic stuff. And it wasn't, and some of them, yeah, they did had sci-fi twist to it. They were aliens and shit like that, but... It was more or less he was digging in for the fear of the unknown, which makes it really damn good. <laughs> you know, um, some of the episodes, I even wrote down a list of my favorite episodes, which are like majority of everyone's favorites. But anyways, he, he did a lot of good things with the Twilight Zone series, right? So <laughs> that's enough from Rod Sterling right now. I'll get into the Twilight Zone, what it was all about and things like that. And a lot of people, they remember the Twilight Zone because they reincarnated it you know, through the years. Obviously, in the 60s, it was really good. Well, late 50s, early 60s. Then all of a sudden, he just got tired of it, Rod Sterling. He went on to do other shows like Night Gallery and a bunch of other ones. They didn't become as popular as Twilight Zone because they more or less treated to the horror aspect versus the sci-fi and a little bit of everything. Later on, unfortunately, he passed away. 
and it's kind of sad how he passed away if you've ever looked it up or anything um i'm not trying to be a debbie downer for this episode but when he passed away his family carried on his name and which was pretty cool because then they came back in the 80s and they did the 80s version of the twilight zone so they still had him included like his voiceovers and stuff like that they still carried a lo over a lot of his original stories from the 50s and they just reincarnated it to like the 80s that lasted okay. I mean, it lasted four years, not as long as the first run. And most of the famous actors that were in it, now they're famous like Robert Downey Jr. and all those other people. Then it just kind of died down. And then they brought back the Twilight Zone TV series again for the third time in 2000. But this time they had nothing with Rod Sterling in it. So they brought in Forrest Whitaker to be like your host and everything. And then you have more of the famous actors that weren't famous at that time but now are famous that were in it <laughs> if you ever get a chance to catch them i know the original series is on cbs i think the remakes are on there too the 80s version and the 2000s so check them out i mean there, there was a lot of good episodes there really was but anyways back to the twilight zone the original series what made it so prominent well back <laughs> it was a different time for what it was obviously you know that's when they only had a few channels at the time and you would have to wait at least once a week for when a new TV show would come on. Everybody got crazy over The Twilight Zone because it just it messed with so much different aspects of everything. It always played on the what if. There was a lot of episodes that had to do with social issues. Uh, so, well, I wouldn't say so much discrimination and racism. But there was a little bit kind of tied in. I mean, there was a little bit of a message for some episodes. Um, I know... <laughs> It became popular from the first episode. And this is actually one of my favorite episodes is the very, very first episode. Because the first episode, it dealt with a guy who wakes up and the whole time he's just talking to himself. And, <laughs> and the whole time while he's talking to himself, he's going around and seeing it's like basically he's the only man left on earth. And then he goes through from walking from different towns and stuff like that. Later on, you find out in the show uh towards the end because all the shows were only half hour except i believe it was season two or three that's when they ran it for like an hour long but i'll get to that in a second but anyways in that first episode the ending you find out like why the hell is this guy the only person left on on the world you know and then you find out it was a military experiment where they sedated this guy and they put him in a room and they basically were watching in his head what he would do if he was the last man on earth and it really messed with a lot of people's minds in America at that time. You know, even still now, if you do something like that, it'd still mess with people's minds because it played on the aspect at that time that was going on. It was a different time. You know, you have to worry about the fact that I think Korea War was going on. It was early stages of the Vietnam War. So it played in like, maybe are they doing government testing on people like this? Could they be doing that? You know, and it just played into that whole aspect of it, right? Other episodes... I know I wrote this one down. Where is it? A stop at Willoughby. <laughs> I know some some of you are like, oh, I remember that because you posted that on social media. Yeah, you know, that was another one of my favorite episodes on there, by the way. A stop at Willoughby was an episode, and I think Rod Sterling he wrote that whole episode, and somebody else helped him with the screenplay. But anyways, the whole episode was about this guy. He was a wealthy businessman, and he just got tired. He just got fed up with his job you know he's just it wasn't for him you know he didn't want to he was your simple guy stuck in a high class job and he didn't like his boss he was just getting irritated he married a high maintenance wife who wanted him to maintain that job and <laughs> he was just going crazy over it and during that time i think the story takes place in new york it's like one of the big major metropolis cities because it shows a scene that he's sitting in a train from work to home and back and forth, right? Well, he's on the train, he falls asleep. And, well, he falls asleep in his dream, he wakes up, and he's in this town called Willoughby, right? And everything around there looks all perfect. He was asking questions like, where the hell is Willoughby, you know? I mean, what time is it, you know? And the conductor on the train is telling him, oh, it's 1855, it's a hot, sunny July day, and it's always perfect in Willoughby then he would wake up and then he would have to go home deal with his wife deal with his bullshit at work later on in the story he just got fed up at work and he calls his wife and says hey i'm tired of this i want to stop this will you be there for me and will you be at home waiting for me she hangs up on him 
he goes crazy and on his way home he eventually you know goes same route goes into the train falls asleep he hears about willoughby and he finally he just says you know what fuck this i'm gonna get get off on this stop at willoughby and go and enjoy myself so eventually in his dream he gets off he goes to willoughby and he's enjoying himself he sees all these country kids you know catching fishes on a stick and a line and all that shit well, later on, you find out it was he was dreaming while well, sleepwalking. And while the train was going, he had jumped off. They don't show this, but they implied it. And they said, and they showed a scene where the conductor stopped the train and he's down there and his body's just, you know, laying on the mat. And he was saying, yeah, the guy was talking about Willoughby. And just all of a sudden, he just jumps out of the train. Like, what the fuck? I, I don't know what happened. It was an accident, right? So they zip up his body. And as they're putting him on the gurney and loading him up in the car... All of a sudden, you see it says Willoughby Funeral Homes. Whoa, what the fuck, right? <laughs> they did this in 1959 in October. That right there just pushed the envelope. I mean, it, it just really... <laughs> I'm laughing because I saw this episode earlier today, and the whole episode is just push and drive, push and drive. If you haven't seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But anyways, this episode really did push it home that it's the aspect of horror. It really was. You know, because you in the 50s, you had I Love Lucy, you had a lot of comedy stuff. There wasn't really too much that was pushing the envelope on horror stories. And the best part of Rod Sterling to all his stories, none of them really had blood, gore, guts, any of that. Because obviously you couldn't do that. The only thing at that time that pushed the boundaries of blood and gore was Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. And that came out, ooh, around the same time, you know, but... The biggest scene wasn't so much the blood, it was just showing the toilet bowl swirl around. But that's a different topic for another episode. But anyways, back to the Twilight Zone. So you have other episodes. And out of every episode, they had something to deal with stuff like what I was telling you about with Willoughby or military testing. So that really kind of played into a lot of America's fears. Could that shit be going on? Could it not be going on? And... <laughs> Later on in the episodes, because every season had about like 30 or 40 episodes. At the time, they didn't do it by seasons, you know. And they would play in a lot of different aspects. Not just the government or everyone controlling or wanting to go crazy and go to a town called Willoughby. But there was other stuff that played off into it too. The same season, right? Season one, there's another episode that I wrote down was The Hitchhiker. This is another one of my other favorite episodes. If you've never seen this one... Go check it out. Season 1, episode 16. <laughs> the whole story goes, and it has kind of like a, a psycho-ish twist to it. It's about this lady. She's driving cross-country, right? And she keeps seeing this weirdo hitchhiker that keeps staring at her. And everywhere she goes, doesn't matter what state, what town, wherever, whenever she stops to eat, she always sees this guy that says, Hey, I'm hitchhiking. Can you take me? You know, or are you going my way? <laughs> That was a wink from Wishmaster. If you haven't seen that episode, uh, yeah, I talk about that one too. But anyways, the whole episode goes is that she's driving cross country to go see her husband. And she keeps seeing this hitchhiker and she starts losing her mind and going crazy. And then eventually, towards the end of the episode, she's like, what the fuck do you want? She goes up and talks to the hitchhiker. And the hitchhiker tells her, hey, I'm here to carry you over to the next level of life. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right? He tells her the whole story that she fell asleep while driving on the freeway and crashed back in another state. <laughs> so the whole time she was driving, it was her ghost and spirit running away from this guy who's trying to take her to the afterlife. Whoa, right? <laughs> you don't find that out towards the end of the episode, but Rod Sterling, he did a great job on building the thriller, the suspense, the chase. I mean, he was a pioneer for his time. It really was because it was during a time where America was afraid of everything the culture was different, and, you know, you had everything going on in America. Like, all, all the shit that we were going through now, they were going through it ten times worse before. And that's what really changed a lot of things. And Rod Sterling knew that. He knew that if he could play on social issues and show the real, true horror aspect of real life, that's not really the Twilight Zone. We're living it, you know? And that's the mes message I got from every episode. <laughs> You know, case in point, during the 60s, obviously, you had the civil rights movement and everything all had to deal with, you know, the whole racial segregation and all that. And while that was going on, I mean, he, he never 
Rod Sterling, he never made an episode that was based on that. But he did put his own take on it. Case in point, there was an episode later on on season two. Season two, episode six. It's called Eye of the Beholder. And I like this one because I see it as a precursor to They Live, right? So I'll break this episode down real quick because I know I, I tend to talk a lot. <laughs> but anyways, this whole episode is about a woman who has bandages on her face. And she's getting facial surgery, plastic surgery done to try and rebuild her face. And the whole time she's asking the nurse, asking the doctor, Hey, I need you to take this bandages off. I'm getting tired of it. I want to go outside. I want to feel the air. I want to smell the roses. I want to smell everything. I want to see what the hell's going on. Why is it taking so long? Well, in the whole episode, you do not see anybody's face. They always do it really good. Like, <laughs> let me get one of my masks. This, this was really good. They would show them talking like this at this angle and then move their faces and then it would be like black, right? And it would build it up, you know? And it was pretty cool how they did that. And then towards the end, you find out when she takes all the bandages off, she's normal. And then she flips the fuck out because everybody, they all have the weird looking face. Like the pig nose and they had the snout. And some of you guys have probably seen the pictures of that or the stills where everyone says it's one of the best episodes. It really is. Because the whole episode was playing on the aspect that these alien people that have been living alongside us, they take over our world and they basically run it. And anybody who's born differently, which is normal to us... They're basically ousted and pushed into a village away from the people. And <laughs> it just, when I saw that episode, and I saw it again today for this episode, um, it, it really stuck out to me like, holy shit. Like, he, he was really putting his point out there on the whole issue on discrimination and stuff, that we shouldn't judge people and everything like that. And what if America was really like that? And... This shit was going on back in 1960. This is when that episode was released. And, you know, here we're, what, 40, 50, 60 years later and still dealing with shit like that with discrimination and everything going on. So it's just like, whoa, you know, way ahead of its time. The way how he pushed the social issues with it. And, you know, going back to Rod Sterling real quick, a lot of his stories all had to do with issues of everything that he was growing up in life. So... There's a lot of episodes that had to do with military. There was a lot of stuff that he's seen and heard of about situations like with hitchhikers and stuff like that. And he really basically had, <laughs> I wouldn't say a fucked up mind, but he had a very genius mind of like how to entertain people, how to scare people. And it was just interesting how he did that. And it's funny. <laughs> I laugh at it now because, you know, I was going back to my conversation I was like, oh, yeah, you know, have you ever seen Twilight Zone? I was talking to somebody on social media, and they said, oh, that's just the, that ride at Disneyland. <laughs> and I, oh, my God, that shit's just so funny because Twilight Zone was so, so much more than just a ride. And, you know, I'll, I'll get to that towards the end, my thoughts on that. But anyways, you know, so the Twilight Zone was really good. It really was for its time. And this is just the first season. I haven't even gotten into, like, the second, third, or fourth, or my other favorite episodes, right? But writing them all down, it's just, whew, he had a lot of shit. A, a lot, for five seasons, 163 episodes. That's a lot. And, you know, they are basically cranking out one new episode every week. Every week. Kind of like what the Saw Guy podcast does, right? <laughs> you know, so. But anyways, I also wrote down more. I'm going to get into my favorite episodes, not so much of everything else. But one of my favorite episodes that really kind of pushed the mark for me and I know I put it up all over my Twitter. I put it all over my Facebook. Scenes from, you know, the Twilight Zone. My favorite episode was The Nick of Time. And if you've never seen that episode, that episode actually was the first episode that William Shatner starred in. He got his big break because he did Twilight Zone. And then later on, he got cast in as Captain Kirk. Then they used the mold for his face for Michael Myers. And the rest is history. We all know that, right? But anyways... Going back to my favorite episode, the episode was called Nick of Time. Him and his wife, they were go out driving from, you know, town to town, uh, you know, and their tire blew out. That's basically what the story was about. And when the tire blew out, they stopped at the small town to see if they get the tire fixed, get the part fixed on the car or whatever. They go into a diner, and as they sit, there's this weird-looking napkin holder, and it says Mystic Steer. 
insert a penny and ask me a yes or no question and I'll give you your fortune. It was a fortune telling machine on a napkin rack, right? So he starts asking it yes and no questions, and then it starts becoming true. Then he starts getting addicted to it like a gambler. Like, okay, are we going to be okay if we leave at 3 o'clock? The odds are in your favor. What? And, you know, it plays on to that aspect of it. And then his wife starts freaking out, thinking it has to deal with the modics and stuff. And then she says, I don't want to deal with it. Let's go. They leave the diner. They almost get hit by a car. And then he looks at the clock, and it says 3 o'clock. And then he starts freaking out like, oh, shit. Okay, something something ain't right. So they go back to the diner, and he starts inputting it in more, more change, asking yes and no questions. And then basically he asks the final question like, hey, are we going to be able to leave this shit whole town? And the card comes out. I can't remember if it says the odds in your favor or if it says yes or somewhere around those lines. And then all of a sudden the mechanic comes in and says, hey, your car's ready. And then they leave. As they leave... Two minutes later, you see these other people all in ragged clothes and stuff, and they're asking the Mystic Steer the questions. You know, are we going to be able to leave this town? You know? And that was always my favorite episode because <laughs> just the fact that William Shatner, he was in it. And then, two, they played off not the cult, but it was more or less like the mysteries of things. You know? Like, how could this little napkin holding fortune telling machine predict the future? You know? Is it works of the devil is it works of just they're in a fifth dimension you know and it, and it played off in that and that was always my favorite episode uh, to this day if i watch any episode of twilight zone that's the episode i'm going for but there's other ones too that were really good uh <laughs> my other favorite one I, i'm probably going to do a promo on this but i end up scrapping it but it was an episode called the living doll if you've never seen that episode that was more or less towards the end of the series season five it was episode six one of the first few episodes of that anyways it's about this guy who marries this woman and he ends up fathering her child he ends up being the stepfather right and they play on the aspect that he's a stepfather he's just there because he's married to the woman he doesn't give a shit about her daughter and then one day like you know with him being an asshole to his wife they went out shopping she goes and buys this doll called a talking tina doll and it's one of those old school dolls uh i think at the time in the 40s where you had to put a key in it twist it and then let go and then it would talk right and it would say crazy things kind of like chucky would my name is talking tina and you better be nice to me you know <laughs> they thought it was all just a normal voice box and the stepdad as him being an asshole and how he didn't like the doll and didn't like the girl like he would he would do stupid things and the girl was always nice to him so they played off on the aspect that the doll was going to go after him, right? And, you know, he would talk to the doll and say, oh, this is an ugly piece of shit, you know? And the doll would come back and say, my name is Taki Tina, and I'm starting to not like you. And so it plays on the whole build-up aspect. Like, how is this doll, like, is it alive? Is it not alive? Is it a coincidence? Then eventually you find out that, I think, I can't remember, if he falls down the steps, he slips and falls or something, and he, and he gets killed, the stepdad. And the stepdad, he's the actor who plays in Kojak. If you've never seen Kojak, it's another old TV show. Uh, <laughs> There's a horror podcast. I won't go into that one. So, But anyways, later on you find out that it was actually Talking Tina that had killed him and freaked him out. And throughout the whole episode, he tried to throw out the doll. And then the doll came back and the doll was telling the daughter things. And then the wife was fighting with the, with the husband and back and forth. And then it just, that was a creepy fucking episode. <laughs> That, that was a Chucky before it's Chucky, you know? And it was really cool how they play that aspect. But in the whole time, out of every episode, they all had a meaning to it. They really did. It wasn't until later on in the series they build up different characters and stuff like that. But the whole series alone, it was... The reason why it still holds up now is because of so many episodes that place about real horror. And I haven't even touched the aspect of the alien concept, right? There was an episode, I think it was on the fourth season. It's called, uh, Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up, right? <laughs> uh, I believe Eminem got that playoff words from this episode. But anyways, this whole episode basically takes place in a diner. And all these people are in there and everything. And all of a sudden a spaceship crashes. And they think that aliens came out and went into a local diner. And they were dressed up as normal people. So cops are trying to investigate it. They go in and they say, wait a minute. So the accident happened over here, 
and you don't think any aliens have come in here, but you all look fucking weird, so we're going to find out who the fuck is an alien before we leave, right? So the whole episode's like, could you be the alien? Because your eye is crooked and it's facing this way, <laughs> you know, or, or can you be the alien because you change your story so many times? And it plays on this whole aspect of it. Eventually, they, they don't find out who ends up being the alien, and they all end up leaving. And then, towards the end, you find out that there's a guy sitting there having coffee while the worker's over there cleaning the counter. And it shows in a camera angle that he's sitting there with both hands, and he has a third hand that comes out. And then they start talking about which planets they're from. Mars, Venus, and then the guy at the diner working, he has a hat on, one of those old school hats. And he's like, oh yeah. Or he said something about being from Mars or whatever. Pulls off his hat and then he has a fucking third eyeball right there. So the whole time they were aliens. And it played off the aspect of like, okay, could this actually happen? Could this be true? Because that's also at the same time when the whole Jericho aspect was happening. The whole Area 51 conspiracies. All that shit was going on at the same time. So Rod Sterling, he really played in a lot of all these social issues. And he put it all together and called it the Twilight Zone. Because in our reality, in our living beings, none of this could happen, right? But in the Twilight Zone, anything goes, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's my take on it. I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you ever heard of the Twilight Zone. I, I hope you do. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> Um, if you've never seen any of the good episodes, let me know. I'll comment to you and let you know which is the best ones. I was debating for a while to do like my top five favorite episodes on it, but I was like, eh, maybe, maybe not. You know, because Twilight Zone, it, there's a lot of dialogue into it. You have to be really into it to kind of understand it a little bit because there's a little bit of different dialogue between everything, you know. But, um, I like it, and I've enjoyed it because I like the old classics. I really do. And some people, they may not like it because I've been told that people don't like it because it's in black and white. Like, <laughs> I mean, shit, come on. I mean, that cut on production costs, for one. And two, you know, they had color, I think, 59, 60. So it was at a time when you could have it filmed in color, but, you know, cut production costs, they did it that way, right? But anyways, before I end this episode... I know I said there was a season that they went to an hour. I think it was season three or two. And the reason why they did that is because of production costs. And after the first season, even though it was a cult hit, CBS was trying to cut money and try to save money. You know, they're all big businesses. They're always trying to save money, right? And so they basically changed all the camera designs to make it kind of like a soap opera or one of those novellas. So it had like this weird glossy glow to it and... The fans fucking hated it. And if you see the original episodes and then you see that season and then go back to the later seasons, you'll see like the difference in the, not so much the audio, but in the visual. It's really different. And it just makes it think like, what the fuck were they thinking, you know? <laughs> and the fact that they made it an hour was because they wanted to fill up a time spot because they didn't have enough for the time spot or something. You know, so they went back and made it for an hour. Season two or season three, I think they only had like 15 episodes because they were hour long, which equals out to, you know, 30 episodes a season. But with that, it's, <laughs> I don't like that. A lot of people are going to say that's the worst season. And the reason being is because there's so much going on in one episode alone in 30 minutes that to do it in an hour, that's just too much. You know, at the time, I didn't know if they were going to plan to do two episodes at once or they were going to do one full episode i think they switched off between it if i'm not mistaken you know um but all of them they're on hulu right now if you love the twilight zone and i believe they were on netflix but they took them off but i know you can find all the original ones on hulu they have the 80s one they have the 90s one or the 2000 ones that came out with forrest whitaker um Maybe I might do an episode on that later on. Let me know what you guys' comments are. Let me know what you think about the Twilight Zone. If you are interested in it enough to hear me talk about the 80s version and the 90s version. They also had a movie of it, believe it or not. <laughs> a lot of people, they liked the movie, but there were so much aspects of it. And I'll get into it real quick. When they filmed the movie, a lot of people said it was cursed because they went against Rod Stern's wishes and the family's wishes. And... They say the movie was cursed because a lot of people, like production people on effects, accidents kept happening. You know, people kept getting hurt. 
and they still pushed the movie out. And I think there was one major death out of that movie, and they still pushed the movie. And it just it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way when that movie came out. That's why it's not so much out there like, oh yeah, Twilight Zone the movie. It's not like up there is like the number one thing about Twilight Zone. Whenever you hear Twilight Zone, everybody automatically thinks, oh, the original TV show, the Twilight Zone, -na 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 -na. the theme. They don't remember Rod Sterling like talking what he says and stuff like that. But for me, I've always did. I've always enjoyed it since I was a kid. <laughs> Let me know your guys' comments on it, your thoughts. I'm always interested to hear, you know, because I always enjoyed it. There was a couple episodes where just, eh. But I mean, that's like that with every TV series. I normally don't do my episodes on TV series, but, you know, I had to go with an original OG. And if I'm going to go with original OG and basically prove people wrong that Twilight Zone wasn't just more than a Disney ride, <laughs> um, you know, I had to bring this episode up, you know. Kind of a refresher. But real quick on the Disney ride. They had it in California. I don't know about the Florida one, if they still have that. But I know in California, they had one since 2005. It was a badass ride. I'm not a Disneyland guy. I, I obviously, you know, right? <laughs> um, but the times I've gone, that was the only ride I would ever go on, is just that ride. Because of the Twilight Zone. They did it so great. They had all the original. It was like a lost episode. But they filmed it as an experience when you go on a ride. Now, I think it was last summer, they closed it. And they converted it over to this whole new Marvel crap thing with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, they killed it. I know. I know. But I'm still going to bring the Twilight Zone to y'all. So that way y'all get your Twilight Zone fix. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all for joining me in the Twilight Zone. I'm glad that you enjoyed this episode. And this was, like I said, submitted for your approval. So I'll catch y'all next time. Bow down to the, bow down to the cave.